The following program is brought to you in part by the film Backdoor Channels, The Price of Peace. Welcome to another Leon Charney Report, and we're talking to you in Israel, but we're talking on the property of the country of Egypt. We're at the Egyptian ambassador's, uh, I guess it's his office, not his residence. And as you know, if you've read newspapers in the last three or four years, Ambassador Bassouni, who was here for many, many years, was recalled by President Mubarak. And therefore, uh, the charge de affair, who is Dr. Ihab El Sharif, I'm pronouncing it correctly, right. is the charge de affairs, which means he's top banana here for the Egyptian representation. Aside from uh, his political, or basically his uh, diplomacy, he's a phenomenal author, and he's written three very, very important books, which we will get into. It obviously, uh, it's not an easy job to be the uh, charge the affair here because uh, you're very busy and a lot of uh, Israelis like to, to talk to and be involved with uh, Egypt as much as they can. So we're, we're happy that he gave us this time. Welcome to the show, Doctor. Welcome, Mr. Chairman. Let's talk first of all about these books. They're fascinating books in view of what's going on in the world today. So I don't speak Arabic, I'm sorry to say, so you have to tell us the name and, and the content of the books, but I know they're very well accepted throughout the world. Well, I have to say that uh, uh, I, uh, I'm not only a diplomat, I studied, uh, uh, I, have, I have a PhD from Sorbonne University about uh, the uh, militant Islam in the Arab world the uh, roots, the evolution, and the radicalization, and I have another uh, uh, doctorate with, uh, they call it Doctorat de Troisième Cycle in France, uh, uh, with uh, Paris University, Paris 11 University, about uh, the impact of the Iranian Revolution on the, uh, on the Middle East. Uh, but I would say that these books are, in a way, the the the, the other um, the other the other way to express myself. That I'm afraid. I'm afraid about uh, you know the those who are uh, uh, trying their best to isolate uh, the Arab uh, world or the Muslim world from the other. I don't see see that this is. Uh, uh, I mean, we have to face this. We have to do our best, and uh, that's why... You're talking I, about the militant Islams, Islamic? I'm afraid to tell you that it's not only militant Islam, uh, the, the, not, not, not only the, the, the Muslim brother or even the, the, the militant, uh, the, the, the other more uh, uh, radical uh, movement, but uh, it's a question of... Um, it's becoming, becoming something like a la mode, huh? A uh, lot of people, a lot of intellectuals, even uh, are trying to say that uh, okay, let's uh, let's try to isolate ourselves. And this happened to America before, by the way, uh, in, uh, in 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 uh, in the first uh, uh, half of uh, the twentieth century. Or yeah, 20th but, but, or but let me ask you a question: Are yeah. these religious doctrines that these militants or intellectuals are following now? Is it because they want to adhere very closely to Islam? Or is it power? What what causes this? I think that the the main cause is uh, the fact that uh, you know in the Muslim world or in the Arab world from the very beginning we used to to how to say to dominate the world like uh, like uh, the American are doing now. But for us it was uh, a question of centuries and centuries. Uh, every time, the, I mean, it was from Baghdad or Damascus that the the, the whole world was was dominated by in a way or right, another so you're in a dominated and now they f they found they, they find that it's not uh, i mean this great history this great past is not the case now it's a totally different story so they feel so in a kind of protest they are protesting by saying that, that they okay, lost their reject. power role in the world is that what they are that's it that's it uh, let's 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 find our role uh, our our old but, role but, which was all right 
So do, do they do that by destructive means, like bombing World Trade Center? Do they do that by listening to... Few of them thinking that this is the way. Huh? Uh, they can't face the... the the Western uh, okay, but you, know, you say so. progress, uh, no, the Western no, you civilization. Say, so let's destruct, you, let's, let's destroy it. But this is our, these are a, a very, how to say, they are marginal. Their number is very, very. very I, I understand, but you say uh, something very, very important. Mm -hmm. A lot of people think that um, the people who are poor uh, Muslims are the ones that, let's say, become suicide bombers. But in the World Trade Center, we saw that these were pretty educated guys. These were guys who who had families, who gave up their lives. I think uh, uh, they had commitments to, 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 a, to a life. And they gave it up to follow exactly what you say, this extreme fundamental uh, yeah, but, uh, view. You know, this is the, 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 the negative side of the story. The no, but I'm interested side. in what causes that. That's what I'm interested in. Uh, I would say it is a kind of doctrinization. You know, they are... Uh, uh, there are a lot of money in this, uh, in this, uh, in this, uh, in this game. You have to know that. And, so you think uh, there's money involved too? Uh, there is a finance. So surely, surely there is a big, big financing, and there is. And you have to to look to the, the roots of every uh, of of all this story, and uh, you have to pay more attention to what you are doing in uh, the West. By the way, uh, I would say 90 percent of this money are already in. Uh, the United States, uh, in in uh, in in European or American banks. Uh, so don't think that uh, no, the I, story is far away from you. They, you have no, your we weak that. side of your system of your democracy, and others, among I mean, all enemies are trying to use or to exploit this weak weak side. But but I'm, I'm you're an intellectual man. Yeah. And you know, people don't just commit suicide. They have to feel that there's a reason, other than if they hate their wife, right? Mm. And and to do what they did, I'm trying to get into to the psychology of the person who's willing to commit his life and destroy the Western civilization, which is what you said they're doing, because they at one time ruled the West or the world, and now they became inferior in a sense, and they want to recapture that glorious position that they had. You say it was centuries ago, which is a, a very interesting explanation. Yeah, because nobody paid attention to this uh, side of the story. Right. Uh, no, it's very way. important yeah, yeah. that we, we put this on television and air it. Yeah. And so then they become militant, and then and they become aggressive, and they become... Uh, uh, they become fulfilled with a dream that they are going to recapture the glory in a sense of the Islamic world. Yeah, yeah. And that's what we're facing today. Is that true? Uh, in a way, that's, uh, that's true. Uh, so it is um, a kind of romance. It's romantic, but it's a bloody romance, by the way. Very bloody. Uh, very bloody. Very bloody. I, I share uh, this, uh, this, uh, this tragedy. tragedy. It's a big, big uh, tragedy, believe me, for all of us. For, for, you know, in Egypt, uh, we are a people. Uh, our civilization is a, is a constructive civilization. Look to. Uh, I suppose you have visited Egypt many times. Yes. Many of uh, uh, all, lot of Americans, and they, they, they can realize that for us, uh, constructing something like the pyramid, a temple, whatever, even now, even now, it's uh, uh, we are we. We have some weak point when it comes to a big building. For us, it's uh, it's it's a great achievement. Uh, you can uh, we, we have a very high building in the city, in the main city center of Cairo, which is uh, the headquarter of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, and I have to tell you that I I asked sometimes. Uh, I didn't ask, but I heard some uh, two, two guys, two, two, two very poor uh, people walking uh, around, and they were speaking about this story. So I tried to listen to what they are uh, uh, saying. saying. So uh, both of them were somehow proud of having such big symbol in the city center of Cairo, uh, and I expected them to say, no, no, we have to... Uh, uh, it was. It would be better if they give this money to uh, to, to 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 us. Huh? They did say that. They said that at least when I have somebody uh, coming from uh, another city, he didn't. He is not saying from Italy. He is not able to have friend from Italy or from England. But he said that when somebody will come from Upper Egypt to see me, I would bring him here, take him here, and show him this uh, because it's question of proud for for me. You see, it's right, very important yeah. this psychology. I mean, this. Uh, uh, so you take from that yeah, those, you, you, you uh, take uh, you take you take from that that there's so much pride involved and, and that your issue there is pride 
Mm, Even though the people I, I were mean, poor, I mean, no, you I say. Mean, I mean, the, we are uh, really respecting uh, this kind of big achievement. Uh, when you have uh, a, a very high skyscraper like uh, like like uh, the World Trade Center. Um, uh, and, and, and when we find that somebody is destroying it, uh, it's uh, for us uh, a kind of um, something inadmissible. Uh, we cannot admit it. We cannot. It's against our civilization in Egypt. You it's got contrary to, it, to your beliefs. It's a constructive uh, it's civilization. It's deconstructive. Huh? Uh, I can say that, okay, I am from the Muslim uh, world, so uh, if the American have this high building in, uh, in, in New York or in Chicago, let's have a higher building. This is what the Malaysian have done. They have now uh, well, the highest right. building. So this is a kind of competition or, uh, or, or, or of, 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 of civilized race that we are, uh, we, 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 we have to go through and not destroy. So you're really saying that it's nationalistic ego and pride yeah. that causes all these events. Uh, I would say uh, a lot of your constructive there are a lot of reasons, but this is one of the main reasons that we didn't pay enough attention to it. And uh, is it true that Egypt had talked to the United States about this many years ago? They talked, your people, I'm sure your ambassadors. Well, I'm not speaking as diplomat here. I am speaking as a researcher, but uh, I mean, I have my, my, my study. And it is in, in, in the newspaper. You can find it. We have, uh, from the very beginning, advised our friend, the American, to take uh, uh, to take care of, of, of what's happening in the area by, by just paying attention uh, instead of thinking that it is a card to play with. So you think so because think. of the Soviet Union's collapse, the United States became the first superpower, the only superpower, yeah. and they were a little bit arrogant about it. They didn't pay attention. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah, yeah. I would say that maybe some, some, uh, some Americans thought that, okay, with the collapsing of the Soviet Union, uh, I'm speaking about the strategic approach. Huh? Strategic, Maybe yeah. with the collapsing of the Soviet Union, uh, we can face a, a problematic situation because of our leadership. Uh, because, you know, it was a leadership related, in fact, to protect uh, the Western civilization against an enemy. So if we don't have this enemy, wh what should we do? Huh? So maybe some people saw that, okay, let's create this enemy. We have uh, uh, trouble with the Muslim uh, fundamentalism. Uh, okay, uh, this could be uh, the, new, the, new, the new rule of the so game. So who, who is creating this enemy? Well, uh, I'm afraid to say that it's not only, uh, the, the, it's, it's not only a local phenomenon. It, uh, it comes from a kind of help from, uh, from the American look to uh, uh, bin Laden is, uh, in a way, uh, uh, seen in the Arab world as a, a, an American uh, phenomenon. By the way, Why? He, he, because uh, because because uh, he we was, helped him during the war. You mean? You know, uh, you, want, you you have supported uh, the uh, what we call the Arab Afghan in, uh, in Afghanistan to make uh, the Mujahideen to make the war against uh, Soviet Taliban. Union because Soviet Union was the enemy. Right. And uh, you have uh, th those people uh, were in a way trained uh, by American, uh, supported financially by by American military, by the American. They have this uh, stinger, all, all this kind of of, of 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 stuff. Now you are afraid about the stinger, but stinger. You have to ask yourself who who gave the stinger to to, to the Mujahideen. It was it was you. And I afraid to tell you it was not for the support of the case of Islam or whatever. It was to support, uh, let's say, to make trouble to your enemy. Well, it was a political and response. That is it. So the first, the first side of the story was played, uh, I would say, uh, successfully, uh, because you got this uh, big result, which is... Uh, you got rid of the Soviet Union. There is no Soviet Union. No, okay. but you got him out of Afghanistan. You're saying we funded the Mujahideen, which uh, bin Laden was a part of, uh, to, to defeat the Soviet Union, which we did. We helped defeat them. That is it. That and is it. Uh, not the bin Laden was with the uh, 
the talisman, not, not what the Yeah, because be. you didn't uh, uh, pay enough attention to the fact that uh, ideologically speaking, uh, uh, the, the, the very example of bin Laden can never be a real friend uh, to the American because of the many other reasons, among them the reasons that I mentioned before. That's interesting. He's saying you something see? very important, that Thank uh, you. Uh, because of his, uh, the context of him being Islamic, and he feeling defeated in terms of the Western world, he could never really be our friend. Uh, that's it. We have never been, uh, a, a, how to say, a marginalized uh, power. We were always uh, in the very center of, every, uh, of everything. And as I told you before, Baghdad or Damascus or Cairo were the capital of the world, like New York today. And uh, now uh, I'm telling about the feeling of those, uh, those people, and I'm not speaking about the, the, the extremists among them. The, expre the extremists choose to, to express themselves through this destructive way that I don't share and I, I, I really condemn. Uh, but some others are, are trying, as the model of uh, our friend in Kuala Lumpur, who decided to uh, make a, a higher building than all the buildings that you have in, uh, in, in the States. In Malaysia. Uh, you see, uh, that's what I mean. Uh, if you are if you are making the the, the, the the Pentium three, and I'm not able in the Muslim world to make the Pentium four or the Pentium five, uh, there is two way whether to, to to destroy Microsoft. I don't know if I'm making publicity, no, but whether to destroy Microsoft. This is a choice of very few. Um, you know, eccentric uh, people, or to, 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 to work hard to be able one day to make the Pentium 6 or 7. All right, let me I mean? ask you a very important question. Yeah. Do these uh, uh, Islamic believers believe that Israel fits into this category? What, what is the feeling towards Israel? I have to tell you something. Uh, uh, there is no one only interpretation. That's a problem. And maybe this is uh, the, 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 the issue for everybody. I mean, this is a solution. Because you cannot have one uh, and unique interpretation that we can say that this is what Islam say, and there must be an end to the state of Israel. No, no, never. You will find some other interpretation saying that, OK, we can uh, live with coexist Israel. and live with them. Uh, I'm not, in a way, I'm not a sheikh to say that uh, who is right or who is wrong. There is nobody right or Everybody is having part of the reality. You see what I mean? Or part of an interpretation. That is it. But I would say that uh, even those interpretations that uh, uh, cons that are considering Israel as uh, that are that are respecting the right of Israel for, for existence uh, uh, could be compatible with uh, Islam, too. That's very you important, see I mean? obviously. Obviously, uh, President Sadat, whom I knew, was a very religious man. Yeah, yeah. And I doubt that he would have made... He would never sign a peace if it was Koran. against the Koran. Uh, if it was Koran. incompatible with, uh, with his conception for... That, that's uh, right. He could never do that. Yeah. And the same thing with the King of Jordan. Yeah. So, so this is, again, uh, show us that the enemy uh, is not Islam, must never be the Islam, and I appreciate what, what uh, President Bush is uh, doing and Mr. Uh, Prime Minister Blair in, 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 in this uh, uh, purpose. They are trying their best to show that uh, the, the battle is not against uh, uh, the Muslim uh, world, because believe me, a lot in the Muslim uh, world think really that they are uh, uh, closer to your understanding for what uh, what happened they are totally condemning condemning what happened they cannot believe that such a terrible thing c could happen and uh, it's uh, it's condemned by them simply uh, so don't consider those as as enemies because they are the majority well how 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 would you uh, prevent another um, or how would you overcome this feeling that, that, that you talk about, that uh, they feel that uh, they're a minority in the world and they want to become a majority? How do they do that? How do you do that without being uh, political or military? I mean, are we going to face this forever right? until they, no, they no, recapture no, no. the Western world? I don't world? think so. I, it is a story like, uh, you know, uh, let's take uh, an example from the history, Japan 
with America. It was a, a, a war between two different kinds of civilization, in a way. Cultures. And, uh, or two different kinds of culture, let's say. And uh, they had uh, their kamikaze. Huh? It started in Japan. This, right. uh, the, do I pronounce it the right way? Kamikaze. kamikaze. Uh, uh, so it, it started with, uh, with Japan. So those who killed themselves for what they thought is uh, the, the, something good for, 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 for Japan realized later that this is not the way. And I think that if we do not make a mistake, a strategic mistake, a strategic uh, uh, wrong approach, we can uh, have the same uh, the same situation in a way. I mean, where where were you when you heard about the World Trade Center? Where were you? Here in Israel? I was here in Israel. And yeah. what was your first reaction? Uh, I was in a meeting with a very important Israeli. Uh, 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 politician, I'm not allowed to, to tell his uh, his name, and uh, the secretary uh, uh, entered and she said that, uh, look, look to what happened, it's terrible, and then uh, uh, she, w we had a TV, a small TV to, 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 uh, to watch, and he was really uh, surprised to find what, uh, what happened, and very sad, and started to, uh, to call his, uh, his friends in the same uh, building, and uh, I, I asked him, what is, uh, do you think that you can, uh, the, the, the telephone can, 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 can function? He said, I don't know, but I have to tell them, because this building is going to collapse. It was the first uh, strike against, the, I think, the tower number two. It was right. Uh, he said he was expecting this building to collapse within uh, 20 minutes, and he explained to me that's why I have to say that they are very uh, uh, close to to the American uh, issues in a way. Because he said that uh, the building is um, uh, based in a metal or metal or steel. Uh, steel, steel. Yeah, yeah, and steel. and this uh, uh, fire uh, will uh, you know uh, yeah. uh, cause a kind of uh, a meltdown. Uh, and it's going to, to, to melt. So he was trying, and this is a unique, I, I, this I'm going to mention in my book about... Um, how did you feel as a Muslim? Uh, how did you feel? I, I, I was praying that time uh, to... to uh, that that it's, it's not a Muslim that he, uh, that he was uh, behind. Hmm. I was praying, believe me. I, I, I was expect, expecting something like the Oklahoma... You thought it was American? Uh, uh, I, uh, of course, you, you know, because this is, I, I cannot, uh, uh, I, I, I cannot share. It's, it's, it's something, it's terrible. It's terrible. I cannot, uh, uh, I cannot admit something like this. And uh, in the very beginning, I was excluding totally, uh, because I have to say that it was very highly sophisticated ma uh, mastermind. And that's why I said, okay, maybe it's an American. Let's hope. It has done by 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 by, by America. And when you found but to out come back to this uh, story of the the Israeli uh, poli politician, he tried to, uh, and this is very 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 interesting. He, he he tried to 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 look to his window after the force because I I, I stayed with him more than a couple of hours, and uh, it was uh, one aircraft uh, after the other. So after the first one, he started to think that it is a kind of. Uh, a uh, world, uh, you know, uh, retaliation from from uh, from violent movement, and he started to think that maybe he himself is uh, going to be the other objective. So he he said just a moment, and then he, he went to the <laughs> to the window and he opened the window to see whether uh, any plane could any plane <laughs> to come or no. And <laughs> it's sad anyway. It's sad. It's uh, it's also a reflection on the. Uh, on the Muslim world, which is unfair because uh, it's a small part of the Muslim world that participated in this. So you, uh, at least to the American people, I talk now as an American, uh, it's, it's really important for, for people like you to talk out and Thank to you. express uh, it. It's, it's, uh, America's really been hit hard. I was there when it happened, and uh, it's, it's a shock that we don't know where the it's end will be. It's a big shock, be. and we are totally against exactly like they are. It is terrible for us, and for me as Egyptian, it's 
double, double terrible, terrible because uh, because uh, I cannot uh, we have a, a different kind of civilization is which is a constructive civilization and opposed we, 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 we like uh, high construction like uh, sophisticated and uh, that's why I I, I I invite the American uh, public opinion again to rethink about uh, what uh, President Mubarak is uh, saying that uh, he said yesterday that it's not only 50 percent I mean, uh, that we have to resolve the problem of the Middle East uh, as a key for, 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 for facing the terrorism. Uh, because it's not only 50%, he said, even it's 70 or 80% of the reason here. We have to deal, because the moment there are people thinking that there is something unfair in the uh, American politics, they would pay attention to, what, uh, to the speech of people like bin Laden. You see what I mean? It doesn't mean that they are part of it I or understand. they are supporting, they but they, they pay listen. attention. Huh? I understand. All right, we had yeah. a cut for a break. We'll come right back with uh, Dr. Sharif, who's really given us some interesting uh, ideas and concepts as to what is the cause and effect of this tragedy at the World Trade Center. We'll continue with him, talk a little bit more about the Iran and uh, his book, which uh, confronts that subject. We'll be right back. In modern Middle East history, only one peace treaty has stood the test of time, the 1978 Camp David Accord. In the new documentary film, Backdoor Channels, The Price of Peace, learn the true story behind the greatest diplomatic achievement of our time and its lessons for the future. The price of peace is very high to have this courageous man and my close friend killed. Winner of the Telly Award for Best Cultural Program. Now available at select stores including Barnes & Noble and online at Amazon.com. Now get the book the hit movie was based on, Leon Charney's Backdoor Channels. Learn about the Backdoor Channel negotiations that led to the historic 1978 Israeli-Egyptian Peace Treaty. Become a witness to history and order Backdoor Channels online at Amazon or Barnes & Noble. Also available at all other retailers and booksellers. Or download the audiobook at iTunes or Audible.com. Relive history. Order Backdoor Channels. Leon Charney sets out to discover the true meaning of the Kaddish, the Jewish custom of reciting a prayer to commemorate the death of a close relative. Join Charney as he finds out the history of the Kaddish and how it has evolved. Reviewed as a refreshing walk through Jewish history and a book that deserves to be read by both Jews and non-Jews, The Mystery of the Kaddish is now available online at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all other retailers and booksellers. Or download the audiobook at audible.com or on iTunes. Discover The Mystery of the Kaddish. Get best-selling author Leon Charney's latest book, The Battle of the Two Talmuds. Join Charney as he explores years of Jewish history to find out why and how Talmudic scholars and rabbis abandoned the Holy Land for the lands of the Diaspora. Learn about the power struggles behind the creation of the Jerusalem and Babylonian Talmuds. It's a book critics call engaging and enlightening, a book which will be of interest to people of every faith. Now available at Amazon and Barnes & Noble, or download the audiobook of The Battle of the Two Talmuds at iTunes or Audible.com. Available now over iTunes, Amazon, and Google Play. Leon Charney's cantorial CD in Disco Long. Listen as Charney movingly sings El Mole Rachamim and Charney's amazing rendition of a disco remix of a Don Olam, all sung in the incredible and individual Charney style. Also listen to the CDs on Rhapsody. Download Leon Charney's cantorial songs in Disco Lam, the disco remix of a Don Olam on Amazon, iTunes, and Google Play. Or listen in on Rhapsody, all available now. We're back. I'm Leon Charney. We're sitting in Tel Aviv, Israel, but we're at the uh, home, or the office, rather, of the Egyptian uh, Chargé the Affair. There was an Ambassador Basuni here who was here for a long period of time. He was recalled by uh, President Mubarak and so far has not been replaced. In addition, the Jordanian Ambassador has not been replaced either. He left after the termination of his time. These are two points that are always talked about in terms of relationships, but off-camera, I talked to Dr. Sharif about the fact of how the Egyptian population looks at the peace process. And he said to me, uh, well, he can say in his own words, that when Sadat uh, concluded an agreement or he, he, he made moves towards Israel in 1977, at the airport where you were personally, oh, there. there were two million people there. And I have to say that I myself, I was surprised because I didn't expect this huge number. So it shows million, that the Egyptians, they have a yearning for peace. And uh, those who are 
uh, telling that it was mobilized or, or inspired by some uh, government. Uh, this is, uh, you cannot mobilize two million people or even more. You cannot. This was the, the, the decision of those people, uh, of the people themselves. They, they, they decided to go to, 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 to share or, or to, sh to, to, to tell Sadat that we are with you, we are supporting you, we are full of hope for uh, what, uh, what you are planning. And uh, I have to say that uh, now the image is totally different, not because that the Egyptians have decided to change their viewpoint concerning their conviction was peace for, for peace, but uh, simply because what uh, they are watching every day, this uh, terrible massacre that they are seeing every day in, uh, in the media. Uh, so uh, this was not uh, our... our conclusion for peace in the beginning it was a, a, a peace between Egypt and Israel that would lead the, 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 the pave the way for a, a, a full and comprehensive peace with uh, all the other including the Palestinian and the Palestinian issue is a key issue for this whole story so now it was we are speaking about 1977 24 hour uh, 20, uh, 24 uh, years uh, behind us now and nothing has been achieved and that's why a lot of Egyptians are feeling somehow betrayed uh, that uh, that this was not what we were dreaming uh, about there must be a real effort from the Israeli and they still have this historical chance to be to be accepted uh, in uh, in the area because uh, uh, let's be very frank they cannot live forever uh, in the support that is coming from uh, a, a country uh, 10,000 kilometers from them. They have to live here uh, 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 by, by uh, they, they have to feel secure without this support that's coming from far away. Huh? They have to be accepted. Well, well, many Americans feel that the key to yeah. peace in the Middle East is President Mubarak. That's sure, that's sure, but uh, the Israeli must, uh, must, must do something. Uh, when when Sadat uh, started this this I would say uh, big adventure for 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 peace, uh, we had here a great man in Israel, Mr. Begin. However, he belongs to the to the right, but uh, he 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 realized the importance of the moment huh, of the occasion, and he 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 said, okay, I will take it. Uh, so this is exactly what we need in Israel now: a political leadership that. Uh, understand very well the importance of the moment and says it and 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 a man a politician that can say to the Israeli there is a price for the peace and we have to jump this is an occasion for 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 us let's stay there is a price and we have to pay this price don't you think Barack your former prime minister was ready to do this you know I have to say that um, when we are speaking about a price for peace uh, the price must be the real price. Uh, it's not a bargaining. Huh? Uh, you cannot say like, uh, uh, when, when, when. This is I can I can tell you something. Supposing that the British were negotiating with the Canadian uh, their independence, okay, and they said, okay, we will give you 97 or 96 percent of Canada, but we'll keep three percent. So. Everybody would say three percent is nothing, huh? and it happens that those three percent are Ottawa. And uh, and um, and Montreal and Vancouver, huh? something like this. Huh? Uh, you see, <laughs> so because it's not a question of three percent, but those three. But there is a, a, an occupied land in 1967, and the United Nations are recognizing that this land is occupied and it must come to the Palestinians. Do you it must know? Be do you know yeah. what UN Resolution 181 was? Yeah. 181. Do you remember this? 181. You mean the older one, huh? UN Resolution 181 was the original declaration of the UN to separate, have a an Arab uh, state and what do you call it? Now I'm doing nope. a book. I'm yeah. that's why I'm bringing it up. In my book, which is just printed yeah. and coming out, uh, Yasser Arafat, the leader of the Palestinians, says, "Okay, now he's ready to go back to 181." It's a long history. Uh, don't it's a long history. And uh, anyway, anyway, uh, we can we can 
surely accept uh, two four two and three uh, three three eight and uh, I think that uh, there must be a price paid by the by, by the Israeli and this is a chance for them because otherwise uh, uh, they are taking a big risk uh, because those many people that are uh, still now full of uh, uh, they are how to say they, they, they are for peace now they could be attracted you know by in a way or another by by some some extremist idea that okay let's let's stop this story we have to reject the very existence or presence of israel or whatever uh, so uh, what is easier today is going to be by far more difficult in the future if they continue this uh, this policy so it's a very narrow policy and it's very risky and it's not at all in the interest of the Israeli uh, themselves and of the area. I have to say it uh, frankly, we, are, uh, we, 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 we can have a, 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 we can achieve a dream in the Middle East. We can, we can have another Europe here. We have everything. So if we continue uh, like this, it's going to be uh, uh, terrible and catastrophe after but catastrophe. Let me ask you a question. I mean, Egypt has signed the first peace treaty. President said that was ostracized by the whole Arab community. Everybody broke relations with him in 79 after he signed the treaty, right? And they all came back. He took a great risk for peace. Surely. The question is the fundamental aspect of, of uh, the Muslims or Islamic uh, literature, is it acceptable sufficiently enough to accept that Israel should be a state and live in peace? Now you said something before that you can read the Koran in such a way as to understand that. That's sure. Egypt did it. I can give you Jordan another uh, historical uh, example. Go ahead. Uh, Spain. Well, I was with the king of Spain yeah. when he made a major speech apologizing. No, I'm speaking about Spain in, uh, in, in, the in, in the 13th or the 14th century when it was uh, taken back by the Catholic. The, the, the Crusaders. The, the, the I think they prefer the other. Let's avoid this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean the two Catholic uh, well, kings. Well, they threw the Muslim out, right? That's right. So uh, uh, the fact. And that you know, the greatest, uh, one of the greatest Jewish people ever was educated in Egypt, Maimonides. By, by Maimonides, but uh, we have to ask ourselves, and the Jews must ask themselves about the the, the very. Uh, a deep sense of what happened because the moment uh, the Arab left uh, Spain, right. the Jews decided to go with them. I mean the Muslim, not only the Arab. Huh? So uh, they, they, right. they, they went, they the went to Morocco, to Algeria, yeah. to Tunisia, and some of them to uh, uh, to Turkey, the Ottoman, the, the capital of the Ottoman Empire. Uh, yes, a week ago I have uh, been, um, uh, uh, I, I received a journalist from uh, uh, Marif, and uh, he had with him a, a, a cameraman or a photographer, I'm sorry. And I asked uh, about the name of the photographer. He said, my name is De Castro. I said, from where you are originally? He said, from Turkey. You see? So he didn't know. He doesn't know the fact that he was not in Turkey. I mean, he was in Turkey simply because originally right. his name is Spanish. Mm -hmm. So they decided to leave Europe the moment the Muslims were uh, uh, out true. of, of it's Europe. That's very true. And, and this is in itself has a lot of meaning because it means that the, the, the Israeli or Jewish must feel secure within an Arab or a Muslim uh, civilization even more than they with the Christians, uh, you see, and and I'm not speaking about uh, the, a very a very old history. Let's take what happened uh, f half century or or six six years ago in uh, in the very central, very civilized center of Europe in Germany against Jews. I have visited me myself uh, uh, Auschwitz and uh, and. Uh, and uh, the how and they are in um, in my books by the way and i fully condemned what happened and uh, i said that uh, if we don't want to remember this tragedy uh, we must know that we don't have the right to forget it at all we have to we have to speak about it and to speak about it and now uh, the, the 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 israeli must avoid uh, giving the impression to the palestinian that they are repeating a, a, a similar kind of atrocity. I know that there is difference between this and this in that, but when there is somebody who is killed here or there, he cannot think 
about uh, the philo philosophical uh, uh, difference. He would say that they are committing uh, against I think, exactly what I was think committed an old against them before. As sure. an old negotiator in the Middle East, I think President Mubarak <coughs> has to talk very tough with uh, President Arafat, Chairman Arafat, and he also has to give his position to Arak Sharon, because I think that he can be the key player here. And uh, hopefully, ultimately, they'll have to talk. Ultimately, so it's better to talk before so many people get killed. But the emotions uh, in Israel, as you know, are very high right now because of these suicidal bombers. Yeah. And uh, wherever you go, I mean, you're at risk. You can see a bomb on the road. Nobody knows. I mean, That's, it's it's very yeah. risky here. Let's That's talk the for key a minute. For this is not by killing more people. That's right. In modern Middle East history, only one peace treaty has stood the test of time, the 1978 Camp David Accord. In the new documentary film, Backdoor Channels, The Price of Peace, learn the true story behind the greatest diplomatic achievement of our time and its lessons for the future. The price of peace is very high. To have this courageous man and my close friend killed. Winner of the Telly Award for Best Cultural Program. Now available at select stores including Barnes & Noble and online at Amazon.com. Now get the book the hit movie was based on, Leon Charney's Backdoor Channels. Learn about the Backdoor Channel negotiations that led to the historic 1978 Israeli-Egyptian Peace Treaty. Become a witness to history and order Backdoor Channels online at Amazon or Barnes & Noble. Also available at all other retailers and booksellers. Or download the audiobook at iTunes or Audible.com. Relive history. Order Backdoor Channels. Leon Charney sets out to discover the true meaning of the Kaddish, the Jewish custom of reciting a prayer to commemorate the death of a close relative. Join Charney as he finds out the history of the Kaddish and how it has evolved. Reviewed as a refreshing walk through Jewish history and a book that deserves to be read by both Jews and non-Jews, The Mystery of the Kaddish is now available online at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and all other retailers and booksellers. Or download the audiobook at audible.com or on iTunes. Discover The Mystery of the Kaddish. Get best-selling author Leon Charney's latest book, The Battle of the Two Talmuds. Join Charney as he explores years of Jewish history to find out why and how Talmudic scholars and rabbis abandoned the Holy Land for the lands of the Diaspora. Learn about the power struggles behind the creation of the Jerusalem and Babylonian Talmuds. It's a book critics call engaging and enlightening, a book which will be of interest to people of every faith. Now available at Amazon and Barnes & Noble, or download the audiobook of The Battle of the Two Talmuds at iTunes or Audible.com. Available now over iTunes, Amazon, and Google Play. Leon Charney's cantorial CD in Disco Lam. Listen as Charney movingly sings El Mole Rachamim and Charney's amazing rendition of a disco remix of Adon Olam, all sung in the incredible and individual Charney style. Also listen to the CDs on Rhapsody. Download Leon Charney's cantorial songs in Disco Lam, the disco remix of Adon Olam on Amazon, iTunes, and Google Play. Or listen in on Rhapsody, all available now. Let's talk for a minute with, about Iran. I was involved in, with President Carter trying to free the Iranian, ho Iranian hostages. You wrote a book about this, right? Yeah. The effect. What was the effect of this uh, revolution in Iran? Well, as you talk about it in your book. Well, I, I would say that uh, now Iran is totally different than the Iran uh, that you mean. Uh, with, uh, with Khomeini? Khomeini, and I have a very... Uh, very special interpretation of what's happening there is uh, there is a kind of uh, Gorbachev uh, phenomena in, really uh, in uh, in Iran. It's but, a political uh, or religious. Uh, it could be both. It could be both. Khatami uh, is the president of Iran today. He's a religious leader or a political leader. You know, after this, you have to know that in the very beginning of the the, the revolution, it was not a religious uh, revolution. It was political. And even the conception of uh, that that uh, that was achieved after uh, Khomeini uh, took so what was power it? was somehow what was it against and, uh, the Shah? Was leftist it? and then religious too. Huh? Was it against the Shah of Iran? It was against the Shah of Iran, and uh, it was against uh, the American, by the way, because. Uh, there have been some kind of atrocities uh, committed by uh, the CIA and you, I mean I speak about uh, Mossadegh era and all this time and the fact that uh, the Iranian felt that uh, the regime was imposed and supported by the American 
uh, in a way or another, and this is they didn't uh, they didn't admit. So it was a kind of hatred against uh, not the American as people, but the American politics, the American role. Uh, I understand. Well, what is the thesis of your book? What what is the main thesis? Uh, you mean about? Uh, I have two kind. Of, I have my studies and my book. The, my, my studies is the book about Islam. Iran. The, 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 yeah. But uh, for 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 my books, that is is just a kind of uh, a kind of bridge to approach uh, the Arab uh, with the other. Because as I told you from the very beginning, that I am afraid about uh, the isolation. I'm I'm totally against isolating uh, the Arab uh, uh, world or the Muslim world, and I think that this could be catastrophic. Uh, and that's why I decided to uh, to uh, to send a message through uh, books uh, by photo. I have, I'm by the way the, the the first one who has made this kind of book in the Arab world. Uh, we call it uh, in French "Littérature de voyage illustré" or "Photographie uh, photogra uh, photographed uh, travel literature." So I I visit a country and uh, I go. Uh, all around it, I rent, I take a car and I go all around it deeply, and uh, I made uh, I make a book. Of, for example, this book is two thousand five hundred uh, photos uh, all over uh, Europe, and it was a long, long trip of three hundred thousand. And the premise of your book uh, is, is to integrate uh, the Muslims into the world. Yeah, I would like them to understand that. Uh, uh, because you know the problem is that they are not traveling enough. They are the not, Muslims. And, and, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, for money reason, for visa reasons, for a lot of other reasons. And I'm not speaking about those. You can tell me that those people who committed this uh, tragedy in New York were living in the in the West, but they were there uh, from the very beginning as enemy. But I'm speaking about the other that are not able. So I, I I'm trying to 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 bring. Uh, Europe and the West uh, to them and, and, and to speak. It's not a propaganda book at all. This is, by the way, it's published by the uh, European uh, Union. It's an official publication and it's presented by uh, Mr. Manuel Marin, uh, who was uh, the number two of the, uh, the European uh, Commission in Brussels. Uh, but the fact is that uh, you're trying I, to show I, by I'm, exposure. I'm not allowing anybody to intervene in my work. I mean, the photos must be the photos that I have decided to put in the book, uh, and uh, the same with the the text. Uh, but you have a real purpose. You're trying to integrate the Muslim world into the Western civilization, so they don't feel isolated, and they can feel it. comfortable. That's it. So it's a that's very why important I'm work. thanking all my publisher, whether they are European or German or French or now Indian, that they don't intervene in my work. They allow me to say what I uh, I, uh, I think. Uh, as I told you, it's not a propaganda at all. There are a lot of uh, photos of uh, speaking about the problems that uh, the European are facing. Uh, the, as I, I show you some, some photos of... No, poor, it's very uh, important what Germany you do. It's, in, uh, it's extremely important. Uh, now, can the average uh, person in Egypt or uh, in, uh, in the Arab countries buy this book? Uh, yeah, I have to tell you, this is um, uh, distributed uh, free of... You can find this in all the municipal or, or university... Uh, libraries? Libraries. Uh, and now I am uh, planning with uh, a European publisher a website uh, to a very sophisticated website because we have to put uh, something like 40,000. Uh, 40, uh, uh, President photos. Mubarak read your book? I hope that he had the time for that. <laughs> I, uh, I dedicated it. Well, uh, to but he him. knows about the book. Uh, I hope so. I hope so. Anyway, it's a very this important is, uh, work. I received recently the order uh, order of merit. I don't uh, have the, the word in German. It's, it's very complicated. I speak only French and English and Arabic. Uh, so uh, mm. I received the order of merit from uh, Germany to thank uh, the role played by my books in making better understanding really? between um, the Arab and other uh, other civilizations. And now I'm planning a book about. Um, the the Middle East. I uh, after I finish my book uh, about uh, India is going to be uh, published within one month from now. A big book of 500 pages, and uh, after that I will uh, start a big big adventure for uh, a Middle East book that's covering the whole countries of the Middle East, including um, Israel. And this is some of the photos I can show you. Uh, this is to speak about the difference. 
uh, let's say that this is the problem that we are facing in the Middle East. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we, we can find a very a kind of small skyscraper in a way, and then a tent just beside it. Um, we can find uh, a photo from the Intifada here uh, uh, with a girl. I, I, I really appreciate the participation of women. This is very, very interesting because it means that uh, we are changing and we don't have the stereotype of the past as you think. The old. And then uh, we have here enjoying uh, Nivea for a smoother uh, skin. skin or life or a smoother world, but uh, we have the fire just uh, behind because here there is a... Uh, there's a, there's a fantastic meaning to all his photography and what he's really showing is that two worlds can really bridge their cultures come together and live peacefully. This is a picture of an intifada, which is basically an uprising and, and terrorism and killing, etc. And she's looking to keep her skin uh, very, very uh, well. I would say that she's not looking for that, but, but I have seized this, uh, but, 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 this but, angle. Okay, to, yeah. <laughs> you can assume that if they advertise there, somebody is. Yeah. And then here's the fire, which is really represents the intifada. Very you are very genius because you can see from the other side. Ah, I see. <laughs> now it's I, my American. Uh, well, here is another photo that I I consider is one of the key for the Middle East. That this poor guy, this refugee, that has nothing. In fact, uh, must have the right in dream because uh, I think the dream, the right for dreaming, it must be one of the human well, right. Is. So if he has every right day he has building. this. Uh, uh, Dream. luxurious building in front of him, and he knows that one day he, he may live nothing. There. Huh? Uh, so we can avoid him to become a terrorist, or to kill people, or to 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 to, to encourage violence. We can avoid him by just allowing him the right to 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 dream and to have a better life. You're doing, you're doing a great work and, and obviously a very important work. I think. Thank you very much. Uh, I know you have a background where you work with Boutrous Ghali. Boutrous yeah. has been a guest on our show uh, twice or three times. He's my professor he's, in he's, a way. He's, uh, you know, he talked to me once about the fact that ultimately there'll be no boundaries between countries, that he would like to see a world society. Yeah. And he talked about this two years ago. And I think that the world has come to a point where the Western civilization and the Eastern or the Islamic civilizations must make some kind of uh, compact with one another. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they can blow each other up. I mean, there's no limitation. I think there. that we are in our way to, to create this, but uh, it's very hard. The, the, the distance is still uh, far. Uh, far away, but we have to, uh, to avoid making mistakes. But I'm sure that we are in our way to uh, this because simply the language I'm speaking and the language you are speaking uh, I can feel that I am closer to you than uh, I am to my extremist, and then you are uh, with your extremists in the states. You have a lot of extremists. I'm we speaking do. about even the uh, absolutely the, 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 in, in the, the, some some religious Christian movement or whatever. Huh? Uh, the same with the Japanese with their extremists or whatever. So we have a, a, a language uh, together that can uh, give uh, us the impression that. Uh, it is our world, and we are going to make it uh, the right way, and we are not far away as they want us to think. We are not... Uh, uh, there is still a big, uh, a, long, a long distance, uh, but uh, at least we have to avoid committing errors that will, would make this dis distance more, un I mean, more, uh, let's say, longer. How do you feel, by the way, living in Israel? you feel comfortable? Well, I have to say that I lived before in uh, in uh, in Paris for eight years, I would say, and uh, in Syria for the last four years. I was in Damascus the last four four years just bef before being nominated here in Israel, and uh, I can't say that uh, this is uh, the best place to live for an Egyptian. Huh? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but. Uh, the experience is in itself is very very uh, important and i am trying my best because i consider it as in a way a uh, historical a historic mission absolutely i have to i have to, I have to make it the, the right way uh, work is very very hard i i live here at midnight every day almost or if i don't have an uh, some well, appointment your ambassador so basuri had had uh, been very welcome in the israeli society 
he did, he did very well in his society. And uh, I think the probably the Israeli people welcome you. I'm sure that they make you feel welcome here, don't they? No, I don't feel, well, I have to tell you, in the very uh, beginning, in the first couple of months, it was some kind of, how to say, it was very difficult for me. Because, and I, I fully understand the reason. They, they wanted to say that uh, we, ha we must have an ambassador here and we cannot accept uh, a charged affair and that's why uh, you are not able to make any kind of contact till you send an ambassador again, something like this. Right. Uh, but uh, I am not, uh, I, 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 I am a very persistent man. I mean, uh, <laughs> I, uh, and this is, by the way, my advice, uh, the, the advice I give to uh, the Israeli ambassador, the new Israeli ambassador uh, to Cairo, who is in his way to uh, to Egypt, uh, to be uh, persistent this week, uh, because uh, you you must never say that this is a hopeless case. I'm not going to do anything. You must never do this. You have to try and try and try and uh, and be patient. And now I would say that uh, really, uh, without being ambassador, all the uh, doors are open for me in uh, in Israel, and I really appreciate that. Well, we're glad you opened the door to us. Thank we're you, Mr. Pleasure, Thank pleasure you. to have you on the show. Thank you. You've had at the last word. Uh, these are interesting concepts. Dr. Sharif is certainly doing a tremendous uh, work because of his books and uh, his diplomacy. And uh, if you have more Dr. Sharifs, I think we have a peaceful world, and there'll be no World Trade Center fiascos, uh, tragedies. We'll see you next week.